Hey everybody, Mike Lawson here with Fit Exec. On the show today, we're having a little fun with Spin Sucks and Armin Dietrich's Ginny Dietrich talking food and fitness. So check it out. On the program today, we are graced with the presence of a truly successful entrepreneur, professional, Jeannie Dietrich. How are you? I am well, thank you. I'm ready to talk fitness right exercise. On. I know. These are, before we get going, i got to let people know who you are. Oh, yes, you, run, you are CEO of Armit Dietrich, which is a very successful PR marketing firm based in Chicago. And But yes. you also are the author and founder and manager and whatever of, of Spin <laughs> Sucks blog, which was equally, if not more, successful than your PR firm. So, I mean, I'm a huge fan. I got to let the, let folks know right up front and I read your blog every day. So it's really good stuff. You guys put out some great content. It's super fun. And truth be told, it's way more fun to do that than the client service side of the business. <laughs> well, you get to be super creative. Hopefully my clients don't hear that. Oh, one. they'll never know. It's just between you and me. Right. <laughs> Nobody's listening. Anywho, but, I, but one of the things that really struck me about you is your fitness regimen and your health regimen. And, and you are, like I said at the top of the show, you are super busy. But I'm just like, how do you fit all this stuff in and and run two successful businesses? And it's just, I mean, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> well, you know, I have the advantage of working from home. And so we're virtual. Yep. Um, I have 28 people scattered across the U.S., Canada, and Europe. Wow. Um and I've created a culture that is very much active. Mm -hmm. So some people have walking treadmill desks. I have a desk on my bike. So, you know, I take meetings and things like that from the bicycle. Mm -hmm. um, not a super, it's definitely not my workout workout, but it keeps me moving throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, I get up at five o'clock in the morning and I, that's when I do my real exercise. Right. Um, I ride on a cycling team mm -hmm. and I'm also supplementing Soul Cycle because it just opened here, so I'm supplementing that. Um, those spin classes it also does upper body, which I appreciate mm -hmm. because yeah. as a cyclist, you don't get much upper body unless you. And as as you know, I mean, there's only so much time in the day. I can't exactly. exercise 24/7 as exactly. much as I would like. To. So exactly. I, that's that's the majority of it. I'm in the city in Chicago, so we walk everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't have a car, so literally everything is walk, 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 or walk to the train, take the train, get off the train, walk, walk, walk. So. I, you know, it's just sort of fitted in where I can. Yeah, where you, I mean, that's totally the antithesis of what we do in San Diego because we drive everywhere because everything's so spread out. Right, it's super and our spread out. Transit yeah. thing isn't isn't right. quite as anywhere near what Chicago or New York has. So, so you guys do a lot of walking, which is great because that's one yeah, of the things. Right. Like, yeah. take every chance you can get and walk at least. Right. You know, take right. the stairs, that yep. type of stuff. Yep. So. Very cool. I mean, so how do you see all the, I mean, obviously you just pointed out that you're an avid cyclist, that you, you, you work out every day. And one of the, in one of your blog posts a while back, you said exercise to you is like breathing. It's just something you got to do in order to function. Yeah. You know, people will say all the time, well, I just don't have time. And I think that's baloney. I mean, you make time for the things that you want to yep. do. Yep. And one of the things we did, we implemented two and a half years ago is I bought everybody a job on up. And so it became this big contest internally to see who could get the most steps. Eventually, they told me I could no longer compete because I kept winning. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, no, more, you, can't, you can't compete. Um, but it's been that really, that, it's, that was in April of 2013 that I bought one for everybody. Mm -hmm. And that changed cult, the culture entirely. It took a little bit of time for it to catch on. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say it probably took a year before everybody was sort of like, okay. yeah, this is what we're going to do. But now everybody does. Everybody right either sta has a standing desk or walks during meetings or rides. Or, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. it's pretty now, do you see you being the leader of your organization? Do you see it being your, your fitness, your health, your diet, all that? Do you see it being infectious uh, throughout your company? Because you know, when, when people see the higher ups doing, wow, maybe I can do that too. You know, maybe I can go walk for 30 minutes at lunch or something like that. Yeah, I think it is. Um, and it's funny, I've seen it infect our clients too, oh. because yeah, if you have a meeting with them on Google Hangout and they see you on your bike or <laughs> that, you know, our director of operations on her treadmill, they're like, I, I, so it's funny to sort of watch the progression of, um, they start out by sitting in yeah. meetings with yeah. us and then they start standing and all of a sudden they have treadmill dust. So it's mm -hmm. really fun to watch that progression too. Yeah, it's kind of the ripple effect, you know. Yeah. You, you yeah. never know who you're going to influence like that. That's very yeah. cool. I mean, looking at the bigger picture, I mean, how does it benefit, how do you think it benefits your job and then ultimately your organization? <laughs> I'm ridiculously competitive. So 
what I have found is that it allows me to get that competitive nature out of me so okay. that I'm not competing at work. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Uh, in the early days of the business, I definitely competed with my team and that was not, it's not good for the leader to do that. Okay. Um, so it allows me, you know, I get out there on the, on my bike with all the boys and I can compete with them and I get that out of my system okay. and then it works. So for me, it's really good from that perspective, okay. but I, it's, it's funny because I can be in a meeting and somebody will say to me, have you been on your bike yet today? And I know <laughs> that's code for you're grouchy and clearly you haven't been on your bike today. Yeah. And they're always right. So yeah. it really helps you clear your brain. Mm -hmm. And that's when I'm the most creative is on my bike yeah. because I'm not thinking about anything else. I don't have email coming in. I don't have phone calls coming in. It's just me and the bike. Well, I've talked to some of some of you know my peers and other people I've done interviews with, and they if they're going for a run or on the bike or swimming or whatever, all of a sudden a solution will come will pop right. into their head from and it's like the yep. weirdest thing. And so, yep. do you find that as well? Totally. Yeah. I write my best blog posts on the oh, bike. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> then I just have to remember them to write them down. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, were you always this way, Jenny? I mean, were you always kind of like? the avid cyclist, the the exercise, the diet, all that type of stuff? Or was there one day something kind of clicked, you know, you know, I got to change, I got to do something, or were you always like this? No, um, it wasn't like this until after college. I don't think I even kind of realized that there was this whole nutrition exercise thing until after I graduated from college. Yeah. Um, I gained the freshman 15, and so that was kind of pushed along. Um, in my family, there's really high cholesterol and heart disease. So I remember the doctor saying to me at 27, he was like, you know, you can do something about that now be, or you're, you can have a heart attack yep. at 40 yep. and do something about it then. Well, if I hadn't done something about it, then I'd be having a heart attack this year probably. So, you know, I cut out red meat in the beginning and then I went fully vegetarian. I think by, well, by the time I was 30, I mm -hmm. think I went mm -hmm. vegetarian. I'll never go vegan because I can't give up dairy, cheese, gotcha. ice cream. Um, but yeah, I'm really careful about my diet and mm -hmm. how it balances out my workouts and, mm -hmm. you know, what kinds of things I'm putting into my body that, that, you know, some of that comes with the racing mentality oh, a yeah. little bit, too, but yeah, I'm pretty careful about that. Yeah, stuff. you gotta no, have the... That's it, I do eat french fries. You got... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with french fries. But I mean, it's, it's fuel for your body, you know? It you is. gotta have, you gotta put fuel, it's like a car, you gotta put fuel in it in order for it to work. Same thing with your body, so. Yep. And especially totally. with you, you're probably burning a gazillion calories on the bike every day. A lot of calories. <laughs> so, I mean, so... How, I mean, you mentioned that, let's talk about kind of time management here. You mentioned that you get up at what, five o'clock in the morning to do yep. your workouts. And I mean, we're all busy. We have families, jobs and stuff. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is being in Chicago and in, in part of that's not cold now. It's obviously very warm at this time <laughs> right. of the year a little bit. That's an understatement for you guys. But um, what about when it's like 13 below zero in late February? What do you do to um, keep maintain your going exercise? Besides insane. <laughs> um, you know what I found, I'll show you, um, on, there's an iPad app called Peloton, which is actually goes with the Peloton bike, but mm -hmm. you don't, oh, that's the wrong one. You don't have to have the Peloton bike to do the classes. Yeah. So you have this, uh, you might not be able to see it with the, um, window there, but you have this and then they, they have live classes, they have on demand classes. And so I actually just take the live class at five o'clock every morning, mm -hmm. and it's like being it's like being in class. So oh. that's what I do in the winter time. Okay. Um, you know, I've done everything from record the the tour and watch the tour while you ride your stage ride your bike on the on the trainer and ugh. Yeah. I I watch Breaking Bad once one winter because it was every day. You know that stuff's so boring. I found that this Peloton app just keeps me going because it's it's like you're being you're in a class. Okay, very cool, very good. Cool. That's a great. I always wondered that because in San Diego we're kind of blessed with I know decent weather a little yeah. bit. You know, so uh, we Probably. don't kind of run into that problem every now and then. But uh, but if you have some rain, we would like that if you can send that I our way. <laughs> That would be wonderful. Um, so do you have any like accountability mechanisms that keep you going? I mean, it sounds like you're pretty well disciplined in your in your regimen each and every day. But is there is there somebody who like, you know, kicks you out of bed or is there somebody who like, hey, did you work out today or or hey, you know, you're you shouldn't eat that chocolate eclair. Or what's going on? I mean, is there anything like that going on? 
Um, you know, what really keeps me accountable is the, the wearable technology because oh. everybody can see it, right? Yep. So yep. they can see, well, what's wrong with you? Why, you know, if, if I'm not getting more than 20,000 steps a day, they're like, what is going on with you? <laughs> um, and you start to feel guilty about it yeah. too. Totally guilty. Yeah. So I found even when I travel, I get up, I wor work out while I'm at, at the hotel. And then if I'm through airports, I, instead of taking the train, you know, in the airport, I walk I'll have the rental bus um, drop me off at the furthest down terminal and then I'll walk to wow. my terminal. Like I try to do all that stuff just because I feel guilty for not getting my steps. Well, and you're sitting on planes for hours and hours. Right. I mean, right, gosh, right, you got to right. do something to yeah. equalize that, you know? Yep. My goodness gracious. Okay. So, I mean, to, to wrap up here, I mean, what advice do you have for other folks out there who may be stuck in a rut out there? who want to climb the ladder and get to that CEO position or the vice president position, but gosh, they're just stuck in the cubicle and they're not doing anything. And what advice do you have for folks out there uh, who can kind of get ahead in the fitness area? <laughs> or how it can help them in their jobs, actually being more productive, being more efficient, disciplined, that type of stuff. You know, I think that everybody reads about that stuff and you, you, I think intellectually know that that's the case, but until you actually do it, you don't fully get that it is making you more productive. And like, I mean, because I work from home, there'll be some days where I'll work in the morning instead of work out. And mm -hmm. then I'll do a, a lunch break where I'm doing my, and I'm, it's just not as effective. So yeah. that helps too. When the alarm clock goes off, I have to say to myself, okay, get out of bed and do this workout because you're going to be so much more productive today. And it's true. Yeah. I mean, you do, you do have to do the self-talk, but you also have to treat it just like brushing your teeth. It's just something you do every yeah. day. Yeah. It takes six weeks to make a habit, so you've just got to do it for six weeks, and then you'll be golden. Yeah, everyone I've talked to who is who has their routine down, it's like it's just it's that first step. It's getting out of bed in the morning or yep. just getting out the door. Yep. That's the hardest yep. thing. But it once is you the hardest start, thing. Yep. then it's then it just becomes part of your life. And like you said, after six weeks, you know, it's just natural it's part of your routine. Exactly. Yeah. And then when you don't do it, it's like not having your caffeine or something. You're like in the shade. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I can't function today. What's wrong with me? <laughs> exactly. Go out yeah. and ride the bike, will you? <laughs> well, very cool. Well, Jeannie, thank you so much. To wrap up, I mean, is there, what, do you want to say anything? What's on the horizon with uh, Armand Dietrich or Spin Sucks? What do you guys got going? Well, Spin Sucks, we're going to be launching an online course in November. So right. that's what I'm working on really hard right now. Okay. So it, we should include some fitness stuff in there. <laughs> actually, you know, what's, what's funny is I've actually been thinking a lot about this because there's so much content out there that people have access to in sort of the professional development and online courses and online education, all that, that we now have access to. Yeah. But we all tend to put it to the bottom of the list for all the reasons that we've just talked about here, which is the same with fitness, right? Exactly. I'm busy. I don't have time. It gets, you know, I want to make this a priority, but you know, where do I fit it in? Same kinds of things. So I'm actually thinking about how you create that urgency and accountability around that professional development piece. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's that's what I'm working on right now. Right on. Well, we look forward to seeing that. Very Thanks. cool. We'll keep an eye out for it. Definitely. All right, everybody, Jeannie Dietrich from Armit Dietrich and Spin Sucks. Thank you so much, Jeannie, for being on the show. I appreciate you it. You bet. It was really good to see you. <laughs> good to Yay. see you as well. <laughs>